Hi, we are now in lecture eight of the course properties of AB materials. And uh, let me just share the screen for this session. Oh, we are going to, I'll be having you or having you see the a, a process for uh, image processing as we continue the lecture on uh, surface area we will deal with the also the deal with the related properties of volume and density which are critical to some uh, design considerations for processes and uh, equipment so let me share the screen for uh, image processing Okay, so you're now seeing the uh, software for uh, the initial image processing of uh, delineating or demarcating the uh, shape of the material. Okay, so we have here an image of Mingo, the same Mingo that we have used earlier uh, for the for lecture seven. And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, turn it into black and white. And then we'll try to uh, invert this. Okay, so you have now a portion that is black, and we're going to select the uh, black portion and then inverse this. So you have a, and, and add another layer so that we can make it color white. So that is how now the area is isolated. Okay, what a program can do is, well, it can assess this uh, cap capabilities of the software and then, um, or it can, it can replicate this uh, pattern and then uh, automate this one. And now, once this is done, these, the image can now be now uh, imported into another software called Scilab. Let me share that screen. Okay. Uh, share a new screen. And this is uh, the setup of Scilab. Unfortunately, um, I, I have only made use of this one for uh, presentation of uh, graph or uh, data. And beyond that, I have not made use of this software. So this is just to show you how it should look and it has an interface, okay? Uh, this is the graphic user interface where you input a code uh, in this line. Uh, if you could recall the, um, so the, the, uh, the, well, we are going to refer to a uh, literature here. Okay, let me share another screen. So this is a image processing literature uh, study, okay? And it's on, uh, it, it's using image processing to determine the surface area and volume of, of as axis symmetric. So this means that it's symmetric along the axis or oh, as axis symmetric agricultural products. It does not say exactly here what product, I think it's oranges. Yeah, it's oranges. And then and the, there is, a, yeah, it's oranges. So it, it uses a code here. Uh, in MATLAB, it's at the end, it's in the appendix portion. So this is the code. But this code is for MATLAB, and MATLAB is a licensed software. Uh, similarly, uh, we have Scilab, which is open source. It's, it's, uh, it's an alternative to MATLAB. But this code here, uh, if you're going to input that to, into Scilab, this has to be uh, um, adjusted for for the syntax of the program, okay, of the yeah for the software itself. Now, uh, this is just to show you. So this is going to be the code that should be inputted into Scilab so that it runs or similar something like this, okay, so that it runs and uh, computes now for the area of the processed image, okay. Uh, the one that we did with uh, Photoshop 
it can also be replicated here in Sign Up. Um, but that would take a lot of um, program skill. Uh, but yeah, so that's how it is. And so let's proceed now with the discussion. Let's go back to our screen here. Uh, we have some importance uh, of the properties of volume and density, which are, uh, well, it's, it's, it's related to the property of uh, surface area. And we have here for uh, product evaluation, it's also important for drying and storage, and the design of handling and storage equipment and processes, and also lastly for sorting uh, process. Okay, so the process would also involve the equipment. With the variety of the AB materials and the variety of uh, processes involved with these materials, um, there are really more. Uh, they call this applications or importance that could be identified, but we are uh, limiting as this to for just for the sake of discussion. Okay, so more applications of the volume and density in relation to other uh, physical properties and even uh, other properties of materials such as those of mechanical. Uh, for the determination of these two properties, besides those okay, that are well, well known, we have also computational methods um, in relation to what we have done a while ago uh, with the surface area, or as I've shown. Okay. Now, there are classic methods. We have here the volume displacement method. Uh, there is also the uh, more accurate pycnometer method used for uh, porous materials such as seeds, uh, which can intake or can absorb water. Okay, so the pyknometer method use fluid, um, fluids such as gas or toluene to accommodate different materials. It would depend on the material, okay? Uh, so the volume displacement method uses the steps of weighing the material or the object and then submerging it in water, and then weighing the displaced water. And after that, we can now use the measured uh, parameters to compute for the volume using equation one, where the uh, G, G sub W is the rate of the displaced water, and it's divided by the density of the water, uh, Y, W. Okay, for density, it is uh, simply one over the specific weight. And the specific weight is measured using equation two. We have uh, the weight of the material, K, okay, G, and um, gamma is the specific weight, K, okay, of the material. With the pictometer method, there are different setups of pictometers available. And there is the very basic gas picometer as shown in figure one, but still with different kinds of setups, okay? But the idea is to have the object create a pressure by displacing the fluid inside the uh, setup or the, the tubes, okay? And that pressure is related to the volume and density using equation number three, where the chamber has an initial pressure and volume and the reference volume and expanded gas pressure as are also given or based on the or determined using measurements. The expanded gas pressure is the value when the material has introduced a pressure into the chamber so that the gas or the fluid uh, expands into the reference volume area. Okay, it spills into that reference volume area. Uh, Okay, so that would be all for this session. In the next lecture, we will tackle properties related to, uh, well, this uh, last uh, discussion that we have on volume density, and that would be porosity.